Hey everybody, we're back. Now that the TV is uh, mounted in uh, any way, shape, or fashion you want, uh, the purpose of this introduction would be find out where you want to put the outlet after the TV is mounted due to the fact that sometimes outlets are bulky or the plugs are bulky. Now, someone somewhere in China decided to say, wow, let's make this a right angle so it minimizes how proud the outlet sits so you could flush mount a TV closer. Now, this bracket is actually would allow me to plug it in this way and then just bend the cord uh, like a 90 degrees because it sits off three, four inches. But anyway, what we're going to do is pop the cover. We're going to send in a flathead. We're going to find out where the beam is. We're going to pull everything and then it, we're going to send the snake up. There shouldn't be a cat. But if there is, we'll address that when the time comes. If the snake goes all the way up, I'll see if I have the uh, proper tools. And we'll put a plug behind here, and the outlet will sit somewhere around here. So, if you don't, if you just want to guess. Hmm. Maybe the right. Maybe the right. Which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, because just by co uh, coincidence, the TV actually still hides the uh, the outlet if it had to go straight up. Yeah, I installed uh, all these plates many, many years ago. Okay, so you don't have to take the outlet outlet yet. It is double sheet rock, so I might have to. So you want to go back and just say, okay, there's the other side of the room. And don't put your screwdriver in the side of the outlet because <laughs> if you hit the hot, you could have a problem. Right, it'll look like this. Well, <laughs> it'll look like, uh, yeah, well, right. it'll it'll look like the, uh, the outlet challenge. Right, so you can go back and you hit the wall, come back an inch, go left or right. And again, you got to be careful. So you might want to take it and hit the this side. Okay. Well, it's not in my favor, but it's not bad. So the two by four is right here. Again, so at this point, I will loosen the outlet. Right, so now, <clears throat> this is where it gets a little Italian. Now you can really get in and you could test both sides. Yep, so there's nothing here. This goes all the way on an angle. You just want to double check. See, it's not moving. And you could actually ride the 2x4. Okay. Right, and obviously you're going on the outside of the box. Right. Or right below it on the outside. Right. So now I know that the 2x4 is on this side. One good key is that when I take the TV off and I measure from left to right, I can put the box closest to the 2x4 as I can, and it still will hide behind the TV. Okay, took the outlet out, taped it up because it's live, because it feeds half the house. And what you want to do is remove this Romex bracket, if that's the box you have. That just holds the clamp. Now, of course, the outlets excuse me, the wires go through the top. What you want to do is send the snake in one of these two holes, if it allows you to go up the wall to make sure there is or is not a cat to get to the point where you possibly want your outlet. What we're going to do is send the snake, push the Romex back. If you feel uncomfortable at any point, shut it off. But I was a uh, astronaut in my previous life, so I feel extremely comfortable. All right, so this is an average snake. You could buy it. It's called, I mean, I call it a snake. It's a piece of metal. It comes in one, two, three, four hundred. You could cut it. This is like a six foot piece. It's good for traveling. Nothing any more than a homeowner should ever need, unless I had to come down the attic and like install an actual outlet here. So we'll try our best. Remember, hot side down, so it doesn't shatter. I mean, it doesn't short. If your house is wired correctly, the negative should not be powered, but I've actually done this to the point where the, it was reverse polarity. But 
it's taped so we're going to try to again go in it in a way where i feel comfortable there we go now you don't want to start like this this is a little bit of a trick because now you're forcing it to hit the wall like this and now you're curling it the lower you go excuse the um wording but the lower you go like this the higher the 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 less of the angle and it has a more so trick like i'll show you so see how it it's going in and it's it's hitting the wall you can't hear it but it's hitting the wall if i go down i have a better shot of it going straight up the wall you gotta have to know what i'm talking about but see how i'm starting it low so now this is plenty i feel comfortable i'm in the wall so now what we're going to do is off camera oh excuse me i got a plastic cut in you could buy them at Home Depot, Lowe's. This is used. I got to back them out. I already determined where I want to put the outlet. Remember, there's a beam. So what I'm going to do is measure where potentially the beam. It doesn't have to be accurate, but just enough to know where you think it is. So we're at exactly four feet. So four and a half feet is going to be where the current beam is. So just so I don't make a hole in the wall a dozen times, We'll use the top. No. We'll go here. Here's four and a half feet. Here's you just mark it. We'll guess. We'll just make a pencil mark. Now what I'm going to do is I have the right tool. Here is a drywall tool. Um, I kept the hammer up here. Sometimes you use lineman's pliers. I want to put the outlet right here. So this is where the beam is. I'm going to go about an inch or two to the left and just very calmly Remember, it's doubled, which might be a problem with putting the box in the wall, but probably not. You just open it up. Now, I want to go to the right as far as I could go. Be careful that on the beam, there might be one, two, three, or six. There might be wires. So you got to be careful. And now these two go up. So these two might be on the wire. So it's all in the field. If you've never done this, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but it's all in the feel of like, you don't want to saw the wire. So, if you do, well, I make the box bigger and uh, Bob's your uncle. So now, I kind of want to say, okay, I'm going to use the ladder in a minute. I'm just trying to get, now if you want, excuse me Jay, you can switch angles, you could go sideways, cut it at a 45 and wait until you hit the beam. Now I hit the beam. Now you can bring it back this way. Whoop, excuse me. And if you think there's two wires, use just the tip. And of course, this is double. And I, I don't feel there's wires, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start. I, I think there's wires. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back off a little bit. I'm gonna get my ladder. I'm going to get some more tools and we'll be right back. All right, so what we did was we measured it. We're starting to cut it out with the drywall coping saw slash saw. Drywall saw. You're going to tackle this any way you want. Up, down, left, right. I notice when you try to use the full saw, the teeth are always sharper back here because everyone wants to do this. Um, it's double drywall, so I should be fine, but you got to be careful. Sometimes if you go in a certain direction, this might peel out and you'll blow out patch. Well, we're going to shoot the shit. So what I was saying is you got to be careful. Now this is double sheetrock. So this should be fine. I went a little bit to the left, so hopefully there's no power here. Sometimes, very rarely, it's just the luck of the draw, and you're going like this, and it goes, and you just make a bigger patch. Try to do the best you can to tape it. You shouldn't tape it, but if you can, 